So now the more interesting part of the session begins. Having eight people on the phone. Eight people on the phone. Fine, there will be. <laughs> yeah. Do we live with people or do we live with mobile phones? We have not done much of you know, what we call as uh, digging out what is wrong in today's living in, in this particular session or this whatever way of presenting this. But clearly that we get this question, do we live with people or do we live with phones, inside the phone? And perhaps we live inside the phone because we don't know how to live with people or we don't have time. So we are, it's easier to live with the phone. It's easier to live with Tommy the dog than with, you know, <laughs> they have the wife. <laughs> There's no network. Yeah. It's a distraction really. When we understand the, uh, or begin to understand the various faculties in us and the possibilities of knowing and living and how much we can do, how much we can know, how better we can be, how useful we can be on the planet. Uh, I think automatically, you know, the uh, kind of sideways distractions that would try to drop out. Can we start? Start like that? Okay. So, we spent two days, uh, not two days, sorry, what is it, six days? Today is the eighth day. Eighth day? Day eight. But actually, day one was more of you know, just warming up. So, really, the seventh day. We spent seven days uh, pretty much trying to understand and pay attention to things we can't see. Okay. Now we'll, we'll, we'll still deal with the things we can't see, but we get these feelings with things that we can see, which is really people. So we've, we've spoken about myself and that took us on this long journey of really, um, you know, examining myself as a human being. And then seeing that there is something else distinct from the body and then we have the self and then we have the 10 activities in the self. And how they function and how they well function or dysfunction and how they can function correctly. So there was one part that we saw that took us about two days or two, two and a half days, maybe three. And then we spent about a day and a half or really a day looking at existence and how we came to be and who we are or who we are not. And who can help us and who cannot help us. And the answer really is we have to help ourselves. Of course, there are friendly people around that will help us or people who know better. But these have been some of the last questions that people have been dealing with since time immemorial as to who we are, where we came from, did something make this? And uh, then we launch into what you would call as a thorough and, you know, an objective examination in terms of that there is really nothing out there. It's just us on this spinning planet with the wind. And uh, we do things to each other and we do things to the body and we do things to things outside of us and that is really called living. Yeah, and, and what we experience is happiness, sadness, peace, the lack of peace really is to do with the things we are able to do and we are not able to do with the things outside. And we also see that human beings are an integral part of our living. We can't say, I don't live with anybody. In fact, to be able to make the statement that I don't care about people, you need people to say that I don't care about him or her or the rest of humanity. So the, really the notion of being alone is a myth when we examine it even for a few moments. There is nothing called being alone because the definition of alone presupposes that there is somebody there and you are aside them. <laughs> so it's just not possible that you have one human being in a cave who is not connected to people at all. And what we like to probably see today and tomorrow, what we shall see is really, uh, you know, what is involved when we uh, interact and live with people and how that really uh, determines our state of being, our happiness, our fulfillment and so on. So quick recap of what we did yesterday. We said we look at the laws of living 
if you when we were a little tired last evening after lunch also a lot to go through in in five or six days mm-hmm. in the galactic space to activities in myself to all kinds of things so um it's good to take a quick review and what we've seen and i saw that i want to position myself on the right side of living because when i examine so when i examine existence i see that existence is a coexistence and nature the four orders are also in coexistence and i do want to be in coexistence but i do want to be in order and what are the three aspects of myself that i need to put in order i need to put myself in order i need to put myself so that really means that i live in a manner that does not disturb me and does not disturb others within i ensure that the laws that i follow will not create a nuisance for society and acha karna to baad mein it is only later that i will be able to be of some benefit to society but first i need to ensure that i don't make a nuisance of myself hai na kya main dharti par bojha hu kya main samaj par bojha hu and kya main apne aap par bojha hu am i a weight on to myself am i a weight or a nuisance to the people around me in society we wanted to get out even like the speaker he was fine to the speaker started he'll be fine outside better outside <laughs> and you see that in relationship really the problem is everybody wants to have their way like that little child and when it's a little child we're willing to give it that you know uh, whatever benefit of doubt that it's a little child but if he starts doing that 20 years from now people are going to say you are very badly behaved <laughs> you can't behave yourself you are behaving like a brat and you are throwing a tantrum like a little baby or grown up you know and show some maturity and show some resolve and show some emotional maturity <laughs> really so we saw that there are three things that i want to three aspects of myself that i need to align according to what is order and that is called really dharma right so my dharm is how i can be to be able to be in order okay what is it that i cannot be alienated from and that is really being in order in resolution and when i am in resolution i am happy and hence we say resolution is my dharma resolution is my religion as a human being because you cannot separate me from it you cannot separate me from the need to be happy and in order to be happy and peaceful and contented in all dimensions of my life i need to be resolved yeah first day first show that's where we started our conversation from all right so according to dharma so one i need order or regulation in myself this is called intellectual law or bodhic niyam so there are two two possibilities one is i can be in balance or i can be in imbalance in order to be in balance these are the five rules i follow they are called asangraha sneha vidya saralta and abhay in english that is non accumulation affection erudition humility and fearlessness we saw that very briefly yesterday remember this is an introductory workshop we are not going to go into the deep study of this what happens when i am in imbalance or if i have these things i am in imbalance when i am accumulating sangraha dvesha dvesha is hatred okay when i have avidya avidya is illusion bhram delusions about things about the world about the planet about who i am about what people are abhimana nobody likes a proud you know egoistic person nobody wants to live with us you see people don't want you think people like being with us when we are humble or when we are arrogant nobody likes to live next to an arrogant man i may have reasons for my arrogance because i am a big scholar and i understand existence and i know string theory but nobody want to live next to me i can only live with string theory then <laughs> you know that what that means is i can only then live in my own thoughts in my in my own thoughts lost in my own intellect people will not like me and i will not like the people that people don't like me okay and the last one is called bhay or fear so really the abhava 
लुकिंग <laughs> He is looking for it in the PowerPoint. Abhi bana hai. I got eight minutes here, so I just type it out. So, <laughs> swabhiman and abhiman. Swabhiman means being assured of what I am, but not showing it, not putting its weight, not putting the the weight of my knowledge onto somebody else. Okay. That is Swabiman, self-respect. So the second is order with people or society. How do I be with society so I am not a nuisance for them? So what are the laws that I follow to be in balance? It is called Swadham, Swanari, Swapurush, and Dayapun Vyavhar. We saw it as right as well. Fidelity in marital relationship and kindness, letting people live. Okay. What does that mean? That my wealth. Is in such a way that it does not create an imbalance to society. So, selling alcohol, trading in alcohol. I don't sell alcohol, but I trade in alcohol. I bet on alcohol stocks. I bet bet on alcohol futures. Very, very, you know, very abstract. So, all that really is is something that is not fruitful for society. I also maintain fidelity in marital relationship because that is what is naturally acceptable to me and to my partner. And even if the converse is seemingly acceptable to both of us, we see that that creates an imbalance in society. When we go outside marriage, we are basically ending up breaking somebody else's marriage or their children and society as a whole. And also, what is called a sparpida, which is really hatred. for people who don't look like me who don't think like me who don't have my same language who are not from the same state and don't have the same beliefs as me and that's really parpida yeah at at a social level so when i maintain this i ensure balance that my being my way of being is not upsetting the order that we would like to have in society so i am doing my bit to contribute to social order I don't need to leave my house and climb up, you know, a, a, a mountain and plant trees and flag there. If I'm following this, I'm on the right side of the law, and the law really is the dharma of me as a human being. And because I'm multifaceted, my dharma is so large now. Okay, for animals, the dharma is very simple. It is the will to live, and they will live according to their swabhav, and that's natural for them. But as humans. We have to be able to understand and inculcate this, and that's what makes us human. That's why we are not animals. The third one is ensuring order with nature. See, we are there in the same. You can see that, right? There's the intellectual, behavioral, and natural law. Can you see that? We've been, we are not leaving our thread because really there is only so much to us. We understood the intellect, we understood the spiritual aspect, we understood ourselves. Now we are figuring out how to be here, how to be here, how to be here. Don't know that. Is that clear? Balance here, balance here, balance here, or imbalance here, imbalance here, imbalance here. Why? Because when I study this, I find out this whole thing is actually in balance, and I want to be in balance, and that's what's going to lead to my state of well-being. All right. So that's that's natural law or prakritic niyam. So what is the balance? Living according to the law and ensuring that the inherent balance in in on the planet is not broken. Does that mean I don't dig a well and take out water? No. Does that mean I don't disturb the soil at all? No, because as a human being we have the right to do that, and we have to understand how much we can do that will not upset the inherent balance. And that's where you really see we've not been able to draw the line because we never bothered to find out what is the order. We've actually been told it is disorderly. Nature is in chaos, just struggle. So let's just struggle till we are alive. And let's have fun, yeah. But that doesn't answer our our you know uh, uh, comprehensive uh, sense of well-being. So, and what is the imbalance? Imbalance is what we see. So there is pollution instead of following the law, and there is climate change and resource depletion instead of. So what you know side am I on? We already saw this yesterday. So we now proceed. Living with people, 
closely. You know, also what happens when we get closer to people? This is far away. And now, Tumari Patni hai, Tum bhi raho, main bhi raho. But what happens when you get inside a room? So, the basis of relationship. Now, this is an interesting thought experiment. Let's take the first one. And you're sitting in a, in a, in a, in a train, right? So, just you're sitting here. And a man comes and sits right in front of you. What happens? Nothing. I'm sitting, another man comes and sits. I come and sit next to you, in front of you. You become aware that another entity of type human is sitting next to me. If a dog would come and sit, it would be a different cognition. Kutta aya. Hai na? Hai bhagao. Admi aya to, admi hai. So my whole sense of sitting changes. Now, I slowly start staring at you. I don't do anything. You are just sitting and I am just looking in the eyes. What will happen? You will first look away. After some time, when you look back at me, I am still looking at you. Okay. If you are a woman, you are going to freak out. Because I am male, I am big, I am big too, you know. <laughs> and you read so many stories of what goes wrong. But even if you are a male, what will happen? What's the matter? What's up, bro? Yeah. What do you want? I say, Kuch nahi. And I come continue to stare at you. Now that's something unacceptable. Yeah. And what has really happened, you see, although you don't know me, and although I am not doing anything to you, just by my very presence, one A, you become aware of the fact that I'm there, and now I am bothering you. Without looking, I mean without even touching you, without saying a word. And I'm not breaking the law. You can't sue me because I said I was just staring at that point in space and he or she happened to be there. I am not doing anything. I didn't open my mouth. And that's a fact. I am not breaking the law. I am not breaking any moral law. But you still have a problem with me. And why? Because we are already related. By virtue of the fact that I am a human being, you are forced to become aware of me. By virtue of the fact that I am a human being, you are forced to decide what to do with me. You cannot ignore me. You keep looking away and I keep staring at you. That's all I'll do for eight hours. And that will freak you out. Yeah? So we see that as human beings, we are already actually already related to each other. And when we come in proximity is when that relationship begins. For that duration, it could be an hour, it could be half an hour. It could be an 8 hour journey, it could be a 24 hour flight and now you have to decide what to do with this person. Like when you sit on the aeroplane, there is a guy sitting next to you. For the entire 6 hours, you are aware that somebody is sitting next to you and his elbow is touching yours and your elbow is touching his Then you have to shift and he has to go to the bathroom so you have to get up. You have to do that entire monkey business for that 6 hours. You can't ignore that entity. Yeah? That guy gets up and says, bathroom jana hai. Sorry, I can't get up. You can't say that. You can't give that argument. You have to get up. I mean, you have to respond to the person in what would be deemed as a civil way. Yeah. You have to get up. You have to get up. You have to get up. Next time the table will be turned. Another thought experiment. You are standing under a tree. And okay? And another person, you have a watch, and a person comes and asks you the time. Simple hai. You are standing here. This is a tree. You are here. I come and I say, Bhai sahab, time kya hai? What are your options? What do you do? You have two. Look at the number of options you have existentially. One, you can tell me the time, or you can choose not to tell me the time. If you choose to tell me the time, you can either tell me the right time or you can tell me the wrong time because you are having a hard day, you are having a bad day and somebody comes and asks you what is the time. Well, I will give him the wrong time. You can tell me the right time in a good way or in a gruff way. I can do that or I can say or I can say and I can give the wrong time. Now, when we were young and we would play on the main road outside my house, uh, what was the fun thing to do when you're growing up as a teenager? You're musty, you're like 
you think nothing can happen to you. We we lived on the road to uh, a place called Kharakwasra, National Defence Academy. There, all the Indian office officers, you know, are there all trained there. So I lived not very far from about ten kilometers. So it was a isolated road. Nobody would come there, and people would get lost. So they would come and ask for the direction. So these musty guys in our group will give them the wrong direction. Usko idhar jana tha, they'll send them off there, and then sit wait behind the tree and keep beating to see when he'll come out. You know, because that was a dead end, and he'll go and get lost even further. <laughs> and there are no direction, and nobody to tell you. And they would get fun out of it. So you can still tell the wrong time in the nice way, just to confuse the guy, or you can give the wrong time in a bad way. You can say, "I won't tell the time," okay? And let's say you tell me, "I will not tell you the time." And if any boy says, "Bhari sir, bata do, tell me the time. What is the problem?" Now again, you have to decide whether you will tell. I will not tell you the time. I don't want to tell you the time. My right, okay? But you persist. You come and tell me, "No, I want to know the time." You have a watch. What is your problem? Why don't you tell me the time? And I say, "No, it's my watch, and I don't want to tell you the time from my watch." Yeah, but now I again can say that in a nice way, like that guy in 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 Lucknow, right? Who who told that lady? आप ladies हैं इसलिए हम देख रहे हैं नहीं तो अभी तक हम आपको फेंक देते. He was singing and basically telling that lady, I would have killed you. So I can still tell you that in a good way or the bad way, or I can choose to stay silent. And if the other guy persists. What's going to happen? I'm going to lose it. There's a problem. What is it? I don't want to tell you the time. Just buzz off. And if he persists, I have a problem. Now, out of all these options, which route? You know, children play this little jigsaw game. No, they draw that little. The ant has to get out of the jigsaw puzzle. So this is the ant. This is me. Out of all these options, which option is going to ensure my peace of mind? And which way, the good way, चले जाएगा शांति है. Even if you didn't want to tell him, and you thought he was troubling you, and he's an idiot, or you didn't like the way he looked, or the different religion, the only existential choice you have to maintain your own peace of mind is to do the right thing the right way. There's no other option. Any other option I take is going to worsen the situation. Yeah. उसको तो जाएगा ही जाएगा, but I am also going down with him. हम दोनों खड्डे में जाएंगे. We'll both You know, go down the drain. Yeah. So really, the one thing that we want to really fix is: is there any other way, even existentially, to feel good by doing the wrong thing? And the answer is no. You cannot. Can you? The other interesting thing is: can you escape this decision? No. Because he is a human, and he has come and asked me the time, he has now forced you. I have now forced you to take the decision of what to do with me. I mean, if it was a dog, you had a choice to ignore it. If it was a cow, you could have looked the other way. But this is a human being. He is going to tap you and ask you again. You look around. He says, "Boy, sir, I have time to ask you. Why are you, you know, turning around? He won't let you live. That is also decision." And you ask him to कहाँ से आया? वाला वहीं से आया जहाँ से तू आया. <laughs> you cannot. You see, we are bound as human beings. We are bound to be together, and we will be a nuisance for each other unless we decide what to do with each other ourselves. And you cannot escape this point, and you cannot have any other route. And the same principle. Applies at home. I can't make this mother-in-law disappear. I cannot make this neighbor disappear. I cannot make Lalu Prasad Yadav disappear. Because even if they disappear, they're still inside me, and I have to decide what to do with them. You know, they don't go away. So really, when we say we're divorcing people, what is happening? We're choosing to say we're not going to stay in the same house, but they're still inside us, at least for this lifetime. When we die. In those brief moments, and when we die, actually, what dies is you know the body dies, and the self has to whatever just dissociate. It doesn't do anything; it just dissociates. Like when you live in a house and you sell the house, what happens? You just dissociate. It's no longer your house. 
the house is still there, you're still there, the connection is gone. Or when you let go of your birth in the train, A242 number is mine. For how much time? 16 hours. Tomorrow is not going to be somebody else's. Same day. So we dissociate. And in that brief moment, you know, it is said that our entire life flashes through in front of us. Like a very fast movie. And that's when we have the choice to really get rid of the people we don't want. But before that, we <laughs> have to figure out what to do with them. <laughs> While we're living as human beings, we have no way of escaping it. And this is what we like to examine. What makes us related, yeah, and what is really binding us in this direction. And you see, what is really binding us in this direction is, is, is really coexistence. Basically, coexistence is telling me that you have to be according to me. If you take any other route, you're in for trouble. Same thing with nature. You have to be according to me. There are certain boundaries. And if you break that, then we are both going to be in trouble. The same thing the society is also telling us. There is a right way to be in society. And if you break that, yeah, you want to sleep. Uh, you will be in trouble. Okay? So, it basically says there are relationships in existence and we cannot run away from it. Why is that so? I mean, technically, why is that? What is the technical reason for it? So, very, you know, very beautiful. One is space is transparent. Space is not stopping me from recognizing you. Because you and I are in space and we are inseparable from this space and because space is reflecting, your reflection is on me all the time. When it becomes proximal, when I come together, now I have to figure out what to do with you. Yeah, this empty space between all of us is not so innocent. It's what has bound us together and kept us bound. And you can't run away from it. Even if you go to the International Space Station, you have to think about what is he thinking about me sitting on that planet. You can't let go of human beings. Because wherever you go, there is space. So one is space is transparent. Units are inseparable in space. Units are reflected onto one another. Units are reflected with their form, properties, basic nature and order onto each other. I am hence related to every other unit. Okay? Huh? No, no. We are all different. How do you recognize something as a unit? We are the same kind of unit, but not the same unit. You and I, same kind of unit. Same. Two kidney, one heart. Aapka kuch hai. One is realized. Yeah, 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 but we can still, even we've realized each other's bodies now, that's how doctors operate. When a heart surgeon opens up the body, he expects to find a human heart, not a pig's heart. He knows that it's going to be a human heart. Yeah, and when he opens up, he will find the heart. Abhi tak aisa kabhi ho hai, cardiologist ne khola, abhe, ishmi to heart hi nahi hai. We are already aware of the body. It's the same heart. It functions in the same way. Valve functions in the same way. That's why we are able to fix it. Same thing will happen with the cell. Today we think we are all different. Because our mindsets are different. Yeah, Our interests are different. Our beliefs are different. And add to it of course, you know, the way our faces look are different. Because we come from different geographical areas. But let's say we were all Chinese. The joke was when my friend went to China for the first time, one of his colleagues asked him, how do you guys differentiate each other in India? He said, why? He said, all of you look so similar. He looked at me, Abe, Chinese mujhe bolta hai ki we are looking similar. <laughs> you can distinguish the Chinese from a Japanese from a Korean, but within China, we all look the same. <laughs> so really, we seem different because our our intellectual aspect is so different, our behavioral you know notions are so different, our tastes are so different. 
even when we are having the same upma the ratio of upma to chutney to chutney podi to achar is different for everybody for husband and wife you can't match it nahi the ratio is different the quantity is different the order of eating is different so our tastes are different our tendencies are different and then if we are able to see the fundamental essence of who we are then what you are saying is true then we see that the other person is basically just another self he's just like me either he is awakened or he is unawakened so if he is awakened then and and i am awakened then he is like me and if he is unawakened then i'm going to help him awaken that's it for instance you can see my form now can you see my spectacles my face that you are basically seeing my reflection on your eyes and then finally in your brain in the visual cortex and it is a man that is seeing the image of me in your visual cortex but i'm still sitting there so this is an example of my form being reflected onto you and it's instantaneous it's not that i'm sitting here and there is a gap between your seeing me and your ability to see me as simple as that so that's my roof reflected on you in these past 8 days that we've been together you and i have formed certain opinions about ourselves about you about each other about who you are who i am how we are that is really our property is being reflected on to each other but if we even uh, accept that we are here for the same purpose that you and i want the same thing that we want to be set past we want justice we want to that is our swabhav being reflected on to each other that essentially as a human being you and i are exactly the same and if we are able to agree on that that is our ability to see that our swabhav is reflected on each other the basic nature and if you can see that our fundamental purpose is the same we both want comprehensive happiness that's going to come from the resolution space is the same for you and me it's not your space and my space the reality is the same for you and me then dharma and satya is reflected on each other yeah the reflection is still there so what happens is when we are assuming a different swabhav dharma and satya what is happening is the reality the reflection of reality is still the same my interpretation of it is going for a talk like the earth was still a sphere and a lot of people believe it was square but but the truth is still the same During an eclipse, people would think that the fire god is angry with us. Eclipse may, the people would think the sun god is angry with us. Apparently, that's how Columbus, Christopher Columbus, mm, fooled some some people in some some island somewhere. I forget where it was. He had gone there, and when he decided to sail back, apparently the story goes that he realized that he doesn't have enough supplies to reach home. Okay, so he asked them for supplies. Now, being wherever they were, they only had supplies for their own needs, so they could not give his ship supplies. So he said, "If you don't give me supplies, I will make the sun god angry, and I'll make him disappear tomorrow, and he will never come back." Because he knew the next day was a solar eclipse. <laughs> so the next day, the sun god didn't appear. The people got scared, and they gave him the supplies, and he came back. Budhu banana, not correct. <laughs> but uh, that's an example of the truth still being there, but us seeing it differently. So when we live closely with people, then we live closely with some people, not with everyone. Although I'm related to all humans, I don't live with everybody. There are some people who impact me. There are some people that I impact, and they form an important part of my life because of the connections, of the results. and now we have the choice of what should be the basis for my relationship should it only be only be form and property roop and gun or should it also be swabhav and dharma this should be dharma as uh, what's it called a typographical error so it's also called a typo for short and you see why this is so important uh 
shortly. <coughs> So the introduction to human relationships. First point, coexistence exists. We don't have to create coexistence, it's already there. Units are already in space, units are already reflected onto each other, the planets are already there, everything is already there in coexistence. There is order and relationship and coexistence. I don't have to create the order and coexistence, neither do I have to establish the relationship. I don't have to get the earth to recognize the moon, the fact that I is putting up for that day. Nobody listens to western classical music or Indian Shastriya Sangeet, no? when they are kind of rotating, it's always some big big that big. So in this order, relationship is between two humans. We don't have to create this relationship. We already saw that. Hmm? I'm already there. So if I come and sit next to you, we already have a connection going. Now we have to figure out what to do with us, each other. Relations are re relationships are recognized and understood by the cell, not in the body. So the body doesn't understand relationship. My body cannot understand you. I have to understand you. Either I have feelings or I have expectations of the feelings from you in that relationship. Yeah, so either I have respect or I'm expecting that you respect me. I don't have respect because you give me some respect. Because I don't have any to offer you right now. And also goes with affection. I have sneha, I have affection, I can give you some affection. I don't have affection. Now I'm feeling empty. Now I want somebody to be affectionate towards me. You know, you see children, they'll keep running and then they'll try to cuddle up. They'll try to do something. They want to have everything that's going. If they see another child have something, they'll come and try to get the same thing from us. It doesn't matter whether they need it or they don't need it. That is abhava. They feel, I don't have this. And one of the important aspects of really bringing up children, you know, at home or wherever, educating children is to move them from abhava to bhava to say that there is there is feeling there is prosperity there is understanding there is warmth there is care there is trust oh he's louder today <laughs> the feelings in the self are definite so these are also called values and relationships so they are definite they are not independent yeah it's not that i have no clue of what the other person wants and we we feel the the, we have no clue because we don't know what the uh, basic nature is. We don't know what the actual values are and we'll get there. Recognizing these relationships and responding to these feelings leads to mutual fulfillment. So if I as a human being know who and how I am, just like I know the anatomy of the body, I know the anatomy of yourself and the anatomy of myself and I know what you need and what I need, I can then work towards being able to fulfill what you need and that really is the meaning of a relationship. This ability to fulfill the purpose of the relationship as well as the inherent expectation that every human being has from the other, like the man who came and asked me the time and his expectation is as a human being that I help him know what the time is and that's very simple. I fulfill it. I said this is the time. I go my way and he goes his way. That happens outside the house. Inside the house we have somebody asking us something every 15 minutes and uh, unlike the guy who disappeared and we cannot make these people disappear because they are who they are and they are with us for this lifetime and there are only so many people we can change we can say we can change the husband and wife but you can't change the brother and sister you can't change your own child it is who it is it is going to be who it is going to be <laughs> and you can't change your own parents or your grandparents all right when I was, uh, I don't know, maybe in my early 20s and I uh, was going to work one day and I remember it's, it's a, that time was a beautiful city so it's a road that goes up and comes down and there used to be this little temple by the side, orange in color, people would go and worship. I too had gone and once or twice 
and that day i don't know what happened i was reading something and i looked at the temple and i just stopped and i realized it just hit me that there is nothing in there yeah and i just stood there i stopped parked the bike and i just stood sat there and i was stunned because i realized there is nothing there and i'm like i mean how come people think there is something there there is nothing there and my family is very orthodox we have at least i don't know 50 photographs of gods and goddesses in our house but not shiva okay everybody else no shiva no ganpati out of existence you know <laughs> they don't exist so i remember thinking uh, you know about my parents and and my grandparents thinking how foolish they are i mean how can these people go so foolish as to think and and uh, believe this so much that's what i experienced i'm not saying they're foolish i i thought they were foolish okay and uh, and i wondered why i was in this house and i had no answer and of course i can't change them they are who they are this is my grandparents these are the set of parents i was born to and that is life so we can't change relationships and we can't walk away from them and uh, this is what we explore so you can read this at home it is an expansion of every point okay we can pause on this one on this one enquiry who understands or recognizes relationship the body or the self the self uh, we call the self jivan okay so jivan is the entity that is recognizing who has the feelings in relationship self or the body i do who expect these feelings i do from what entity do i have these expectations from the other self or from the other's body it is from the other self even when i need some physical help ki pair daba do the expectation is from that person and although they have the ability to do it they may say no and then i have a problem to meet na bhi nahi kar sakte kya why can't do you so much i have done so much for you yeah I mean, with my daughter, she'll come and say, "Scratch my back." Once in ten days, I'll have like this really horrible itch. I'll say, "Scratch some." She'll say, "No." I'm like, "I'll be I'll scratch your back every day." Why is it? She said, "No." That little eight-year-old thing that still needs me to feed her cannot do anything without my support. Refuses to listen to me. How dare she? Right? <laughs> But it still says no. Now, if it's a small child, you can give it thappar varo gakar, then it'll do. But for how long? Maybe five or six years. When it's fifteen and sixteen, yeah, no way. And nowadays, the way nutrition is going, our children are going to be bigger and stronger than us. I'm much bigger than my father. There's no way he can fight with me now. <laughs> Impossible. Just not possible. <laughs> <laughs> so really uh, these expectations are from the self okay so i the human entity have these feelings and we are typically used to thinking that relationships are very complicated which they are okay it's not that relationships are not complicated but can they never be understood the answer is no they can be understood can you fix them forever well maybe not depend because everybody both sides will have to go through this entire spectrum in the same way but even if that doesn't happen i can at least ensure that i am on the right side of the fence that i don't worsen the problem given that there is a problem outside then this i can do is ensure i don't worsen the problem the, the, the issue today is because it's not going according to me i react and then it gets worse Now and now we're both in the ditch. So, and what is the reason? The reason really is we've not paid attention to understanding relationships because nobody knows what relationships are. Nobody told us. We can't learn relationships by I don't know roaming around in the fields or living in the forest. Nahi samajh na aata. We can understand the langur in the forest, but not the langur's owner. Wo aadmi nahi samajh na aata. you can understand natural things by blanket you know naked observation but not people not myself 
that's why we need education separately for human beings so in a sense what it, what are we saying the relationship exists between two humans we don't have to create it there are certain relationships we live with on a daily basis and we are born into these relationships except the relationship of a husband and wife which is kind of created but it's not really created it's forged with that entity the relationship of a husband and wife already exists which is why we are able to forge it if a relationship called husband and wife did not exist at all you cannot forge it for instance the relationship of having four fathers char baap doesn't exist hence you cannot forge it i am tired of my father i want to adopt another father koi ka नोबडी वॉन्ट्स वन मोर हेड एक वो बोलेगा अभी पहले से मेरे पास एक है आई डोंट नो वॉट टू ऊपर से तू भी आएगा वट डू आई डू विद यू यू कान चेंज दैट ओके सो देट देर आर रिलेशनशिप दैट आर गिवेन इन ह्यूमन इन इन ह्यूमन लिविंग एंड दोज आर दंस वी वॉन्ट टू फाइंड आउट सो वी वॉन्ट टू रेकग्नाइज दीज डेफिनेट फीलिंग्स और एक्सपेक्टेशन इन दीज रिलेशनशिप एंड वी वॉन्ट टू लिव विद दीज फीलिंग वेन वी आर एबल टू लिव विद दैट वी आर एबल टू fulfill the expectations in those relationships and then that leads to mutual fulfillment can you think of a relationship which you feel is fully fulfilling now would you like to share one relationship one combination that you have that you feel is absolutely fulfilling and i am extremely happy in this relationship one you know one combination one mutuality ek parasparta your aapka for me and for you ha eh? human only kutte to sabko acche lagte hain मतलब खुद का कुत्ता खुद को अच्छा लगता है भले ही द नेबर डांटे है ना इनफैक्ट वी सी दैट्स द रीजन पीपल टेंड टू कीप डॉग्स पर हैव और पेट बिकॉज दे कान फाइंड समबडी टू बी रियली हैप्पी विद ऑल द टाइम कम से कम एक तो सुनता है द डॉग लिसंस टू मी आई कैन ट्रेन इट आई कैन डू दैट विद माय वाइफ और माय ब्रदर और ब्रदर इन लॉ nobody listens to them yeah anyone exactly which means that some basic understanding is missing but even then life is not so harsh i am the other for you but there is another and there are many people we don't know yeah but we are not fulfilled with ourselves when i am not happy with myself how can i be happy with anybody else that's another problem basic issue i myself am not fulfilled i have no relationship which is fulfilling and the basic reason is me that's the biggest i mean one important um you know milestone to acknowledge really is that the problem is me and if you've done that then half the battle is won i won't argue Yeah, is my understanding that is missing somewhere? May not be fulfilled. That's the other possibility. So he is fine, but now the other person has some toxic or weak expectation.
Yeah. If I have Samadhan, if I am resolved, not just spiritually, where God came from and which God is correct, not just intellectually, but if I also have Samadhan to do with my behavioral aspect. Yeah, and you remember we said on the second day that Samadhan is something that exists as a state, not something that has to be created moment to moment. If I have that understanding and if it persists, correct, then I know what to do in every, in every mutuality, irrespective of whether the other person is right or wrong. But when I don't have it, then there seems to be little possibility that I can have even one single fulfilling relationship. We will not. We will put it on the other. Yeah. And that's really called dinta, although we may not like to hear it, wretchedness. When we blame others for our misery, that is wretchedness. Dinta. And I cannot fulfill my own needs. Why? Because the government of India is not helping me. <laughs> that is Dinta. <laughs> and although it's not a nice thing to hear, unfortunately that is the truth. And and as as humans we have no choice but to want to get out of this Dinta. Because nobody wants to be called Din. And you are a kid. And you are helpless. And we don't like feeling helpless. In fact, a lot of the fights perhaps that we have in relationships is an expression of our own frustration with ourselves or with the other person because we cannot, not with the other person, but with the fact that we cannot understand the other person, number one, or that they cannot be how I think they should be. So, he problem. Right? After they are not being according to the way I think they should be, or I don't know. They have a problem with the way they think I should be. And I have a problem with the fact that they have a problem with me. If I don't have a problem with the fact that they have a problem with me, so we problem nahi hai. Hai na? And if I don't have a problem with them, irrespective of how they are, so we problem nahi hai. So finally, it becomes a jalebi. It comes back into me. Hai na? Or even that, not even a jalebi, a jangri. Jahangir? Jahangir is even more complicated. Aisa bhi gomta hai, aisa bhi gomta hai. Then you don't know where you are. Main idhar hoon ki idhar hoon. Sometimes it's very difficult. And and there is no place to run. Because both are in yapak, both are in void. Kidhar bhaagho, oh big option katab ho gaya. <laughs> so you see, we are existentially locked. We are just locked. To, to learn to be with each other. Kuch ne kar and that is also not very easy. Even it is also not very easy. It's not a quick fix solution. This is not very quick. Yeah, this is not even very call. It is not even heraldite. That will set in 24 hours. This is more like the gum from a neem tree. धीरे धीरे आने वाला है धीरे धीरे सूखने वाला है <laughs> but but that's the way evolution is i mean if, if even we reflect on how long it has taken for us to reach here to even figure out that food and shelter is not my problem the taken us 3000 years because before that we were just battling that we would sow the field the elephants would attack we would do something cheetah ghus jata tha so we had to send them to their places figure out that this is mine that is yours you are in a sanctuary and I am outside. Yeah, na? Tiger sanctuary, yeah, na? In the US, they have reservations for the native, for the native Indians. Reservations. Like we have tiger zone, we have an Indian zone. Bana hai. Like they can stay there and we will not come and harm you. <laughs> because we finish most of them. When you go towards Colorado, Boulder, you can see them. I saw a few there. Hmm? In thousands. So really, um, so how do we learn to then navigate? Um, and 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 uh, so we are going to see the number of relationships we have, and there are only about seven. And when we live them, there are only nine. There are only nine uh, avenues with which we relate to people on a daily basis. Other than the guy who comes and asks for the time once in a while, because he's anywhere there. And it's easy to, you know, 
really uh, keep that guy at bay because you just have to nod, nod your head and walk away. Hmm. But there are seven avenues, so there are these seven kinds of relationships in nine combinations, and there are nine basic established expectations that we have from each other, out of which three are very basic. And if these three are fulfilled, then life can be quite easy. Alright? And the degree with which we are able to fulfill them, the degree with which we are able to hold them, is going to, uh, you know, uh, kind of translate into our feeling of uh, contentment there in that relationship. Okay? And if you recollect, uh, this is really the three kinds of aqua that we are talking of. The first, the first interaction we have is material, you know, the upma. But what about the guy that made the upma? What about the guy with whom I am eating the upma? Now, this is the second aspect of living. The, 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 the problem is not in the upma. The problem is when you are eating the upma on the dining table and what is, what is being transacted. And the problem also is, what is the history, what is the itihasa of the previous transaction? It's very rare that a husband and wife fight on the first day. Unless they've been together since a very long time. Very rare. Abhi Bish Bish Mein they gave this funny, I don't know, for some reason the examples are from UUP. Uh, bride and groom started beating each other with a chappal. <laughs> they fought for years. Okay. And they were married for 20 years. Okay. 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 <laughs> because a girl said something and the girl refused something and the man got angry and he said something and she got angry and then she slapped him and then he slapped her they removed the chappal and started hitting each other <laughs> and the videographer was also shooting the entire thing <laughs> because he has been paid for the day right <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> YouTube video, you must say, Oi, so the problem when you see something odd, you know, you can monetize it and then you can make money. Somebody is dying, you can make money of it. You put on YouTube, get some likes, get some ads, and um, so we'll take up the first one. Uh, and we've already done this summarization, okay? So, relationship in a family or in a society are not created, they are. We can understand these relationships and then it is natural to have feelings. These feelings are definite and it becomes clear that the relationship is on the basis of the conscious self or the jivan. Okay, so if we are able to understand jivan and jivan kriya uh, and, and the different faculties in the jivan, then we know who we are interacting with. The same thing goes for educating your child. We don't know who we are bringing up, what we are bringing up. Because if it is a brain, you have to develop different parts of the brain. If it is a skin, you have to teach it how to remove mumfali oil, how to make this, how to make that, how to program. But other than that, what is it? If you have to just develop the intellect, you don't know what to do. So, intellect karke karega kya? We don't know. So, you have to know the entity that we are living with. Which is why we cannot discuss the relationship till you have understood the self. You know, there is no way. Hum gol gol, we will become that Jahangir. Gol gol baat karenge. We can talk for 5 days on relationship and not get anywhere. We will still be on some part of that Jahangir. Kuch nahi miklega. Okay? In Tamil, they call it Jangri. And for many, uh, for many years, I thought it is some local street. And then I realized it must have come with the Mughal. The name Jahangir, Kone, Bacha ka naam hai. <laughs> Somebody must have made it for him. <laughs> Which one? No, sweet this thing, Mysore has, Mysore Park. But not this one, not the special one, the original one. That is from South India. Apparently, the guy that made it for the Mysore Maharaja is called Kakasura Madhappa. My father in law told me. And he still has a, I mean, his descendants have a shop on Sayajira Road in Mysore. They still cook it with a good fried thing. And uh, the cook, Katasura Madhapa, cooked it for the king. So, Mysore Park is one. And, uh, huh? The Harvard Peda came from Mathura. Now, you all didn't make it. Thakur ji, Mashra ji, aapko nahi aata peda banana. Inko aata hai. Goka Karadans is okay. 
Goka Kar ha, Goka Karnant is okay and uh, you can buy it before going. Pick it up from here. Uh, Karnant is dry food, but base is kaya. What is the base of Karnant made of? Yeah, I agree. You have come from Odisha, no? And you have to tell them. So you can, uh, let us see, maybe somebody. So, here is Thakur Peda, very famous. You have seen the board. And this Goka Karada. Here is a local, I mean, Mithai is a specialty. Welcome, Kunda. Ah, but Kunda is made in many places. It's called Tartipal in Tamil Nadu. It's called Kunda here. So, what a variation is open. Kunda is basically, you know, Dhuz or Khawa ke beach ka stage. Kunda. But otherwise, uh, like, uh, sweet pongal is speak a south. That you see the version, tha, you made sweet uh, pongal with uh, wheat that day. Hoogie. Hoogie. And we have it as rice. They, they make something called Chakka Pradavan. Which is again local. Huh? Yeah. Jai fruit paisam. And they have one Koi uh, Koi Kodan Halwa. That, that's what Kerala ka hai. Rice with uh, coconut oil and sugar and dry fruit. Rice flour, nahi hai. Maida, they are cheating people. And, and Pirnal Veli makes a halwa called Pirnal Veli halwa, which is too sweet. Uh, that is again rice flour and, no, rice flour and ghee and not oil. It's, it's made with ghee. Uh, they also have a, a halwa called muskot halwa. So I kept wondering why is it called muskot. Then it occurred to me it comes from muscat. Matlab somebody put dry fruits in it and only the mullahs could offer it. was so costly. So it was exported to muscat. So it is sold as muskot halwa now. But it is actually muscat halwa. So it is the signal really halwa with costly dry fruits in it. Baki South doesn't have too many. No, no, this one has. Andhra has a sweet called putre kulu. It, 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 that is a fascinating sweet. Uh, you can get it online, you can get it all. just go search online putre you will get it. They take rice flour, uh, they take rice, boil it, on upar ka jo pani hota hai, they dry it and it becomes a sheet as thin as blotting paper. And in that they put ghee and jaggery and roll it, it's mind blowing. Oh my god, I mean how did you even get rice to dry like that and you know roll like that. Rice, uh, putre kulu. We know because my sister-in-law is from Secunderabad, from Hyderabad, so she got it. So Andhra has putre kulu, and they make something called kaja, but which is basically an Arabic sweet. They think it is from Andhra, but it comes from Arabia. Something like baklava, putre kulu. P U T R E K U L U. There is a site called delightfoods.com where you can get food from all over. And there is another site called redmichi or mitchi.com where they will get you, you will get um, doda halwa from Jammu or Punjab. You will, they make something called doda halwa up north in Punjab towards, towards Punjab. And uh, my, when my teacher's uh, granddaughter was uh, to be married in Pune, uh, I acquired for the wedding, for the, for those five days, 25 kinds of sweets from 25 different regions of the country from mitpi.com. So every day we would have one sweet for those 10 or 15 people from a different, uh, you know, place of the country. Uh, one of the reliefs of having, or of having studied this darshan is you can be free of idealism. Other swastha mukti milta hai. So we all live very constipatedly. Uh, you know, idealism is actually living in constipation. I will do this, I will do this, I constantly constipating myself. We can just relax and you know, you know, existence is much larger and you are not in such a hurry. You can just take it easy for now. <laughs> Things are not that serious. Uh, somebody gives an example of somebody who would take of the great man, I won't take his name. Uh, or called a great man, you know, not sure great or not. Uh, they used to use this datun. Eh? Datun is you take the wind stick and then you use it to poke holes between your teeth, between your teeth. And this 
person was so uh, good at reusing apparently that he would use one side one day and break it or use the other side the other day and the people would say look how frugal he is and uh, i remember my teacher uh, somebody not my teacher <laughs> he didn't do it but he, he just called it i'm just recalling something that somebody said is that uh, you know how deprived he was as though there is a shortage of neem trees and neem stalks that you have to save that one little neem stalk and use the other side that is constipation <laughs> you can just throw it and pluck another one it's a sara neem hai usko bata ke kya karoge yaar <laughs> so in in uh, our gunal in our swabhava and this is a good one you can you can you know uh, sometimes baat karte karte bhi kam up with a concept now uh, in our properties you remember we said form property gunal okay and then you had swabhav basic nature and dharm rup gun swabhav dharm in the guna there are three kinds of guna this we we demonstrate uh and the the dollar sign one is called sam the other is called visham and the third is called madhyas what is sam sam means over doing something what is visham under doing it what is madhyas mediate or right or central view so our journey really is from visham to sam to madhyam in our living so an example of under doing something is i don't care for nature overdoing it i am going to walk like this so i don't even disturb the pebbles now aapne jyada kar diya yeah i don't want to disturb nature so i will not even move the pebbles you have extreme condition hmm. i will not build a building because that is interfering with natural beauty yeah so that example of that that tum tum mujhe hai that is called sam avesh this is called visham avesh and this is madhyas so this darshan is called madhyas darshan how you you so the madhyasta of space you know this void that we see between us does it ever become more or less the void is always there that madhyas okay so in in our properties we can see how in our living so even in our relationship the problem is either we are overdoing something we are going into samavesh mera bachcha and then when it doesn't go according to me it becomes visham now i have a problem with the same bachcha then i get married i fall head over heels samavesh after the few years visham avesh opposite end of the spectrum and yeah. so trust what is trust the definition of trust is the continuity in acceptance and fulfillment of relationship okay sambandh ki swikriti evam nirva ki nirantarta that's the definition in hindi so which means there has to be a continuity what is the problem today our vishwas is shaky so trust or vishwas is a very important feeling we'll understand what is you know vishwas and why it is called a foundation and a simple way to explain trust is written here trust is the clarity the assurance that the other person's basic desire is for my well being and when i have such clarity i become sensitive to the other person as well so when do i have trust now as long as i have this assurance i have trust the moment i feel he or she wanted something else i doubt their intention i doubt their basic desire is when things go downhill and that happens so fast it happens before i have noticed it so if this happens then this continuity in acceptance and fulfillment cannot happen because for that instance it is broken over there too but basically at least from my side you know, the other 
डेफिनेशन फॉर ट्रस्ट इज न्यायपूर्ण व्यवहार की निरंतरता दंटिन्यूटी ऑफ जस्टफुल बिहेवियर इट्स अ वेरी हाई वैल्यू ओके सो वेन वी आर टॉकिंग ऑफ दीज रिलेशनशिप एंड द फुलफिलमेंट रिमेंबर दैट वी आर लुकिंग एट इट फ्रॉम इन इन दीज स्टेजेस वी विल गेट अ ग्लिम्स समटाइम देर बी अम्बलेंस देन वी विल गेट सर्टिट्यूड and then we'll go up and then it become absolute okay so it's not zero one i have trust sometimes i don't have trust sometimes i trust certain people under certain conditions certain conditions that trust is broken sometimes i may end up trusting people inside my house for that one instant then i have lost it basically i have lost trust there is no relation it is broken and when when we start i mean when i i mean i heard this for the first time when uh, you know i was a bachelor i wasn't married i didn't have a job i didn't care that i didn't have a job uh, i just wanted to figure out life and do something useful and i thought i don't have this problem i don't have any problem i don't have trust problem and, and then when i started noticing i realized no the answer is not that simple we do have trust problem within 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 even within people that we live with even our own parents for that moment we feel this person cannot be trusted can we fight uh somebody i know is very close to me <laughs> somebody wanted to buy a house in the family and uh, they were going to take a loan from outside so when i got to know i said what is the point in taking a loan from the bank because you have to give double interest to the bank so why don't we do this why don't you give them your savings okay and uh, they can repay it to you and if you feel let us say that you will lose the interest they can just give you simple interest so at least you have saved on the compounding interest that you have given to the bank because when you take a housing loan let us say for 8% you actually end up paying 15% to the bank because they will first cut your interest and then your principal okay so those who know they know how loans work so i happened mai bol diya and i took me a long time to convince these two part I mean, the party to part with their uh, the party that was trying to convince was uh, it was their uh, you know retirement fund so they were very protective about it because they had gained this in 30 years and i said this is your offspring where is it going to go just give it to it. i went away then i came back in 6 months everything was done the apartment was purchased and then i found that the entity that had given the money Had put its mother's name, I mean its wife's name, on the house. I said, "Why did you do that? That's your son." So the answer I got was, "No, to keep him in check." I said, "But you gave your son fifteen lakh. You don't trust your son to give the money back. So you put your wife's name on the property." <laughs> so finally, you know, as we grow up, it seems that we we trust the husband and wife entity more many times than our own children. because we don't know and really that's because we probably have not spent enough time reflecting on what that relationship is or i have have heard too many stories right itna kahani sun liya ki iske bete ne wo kya uski beti nahi hai kya now i start i have this fear that my own son or offspring can do this to me and i carry that fear and it's not to say that it doesn't happen but the thing is what is the right thing to do i'd gone to somebody's house in nagpur okay uh he comes from the business community and uh his wife asked me what do you do okay there a large business community from rajasthan and i said uh, this is what i do So basically nothing, you know. I mean, now that's why I started expelling oil because I can tell people that they'll nickel down, you know, because there's nothing to say otherwise. So <laughs> and then they don't ask me, "Kitna tel nickel?" So they just think that tel se ghar chalta hai iska and whatever, right? So I don't, I don't. <laughs> so jut, 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 bhi nahi bolna padta na. <laughs> you don't have to lie then. So I have tel nickel down. So I, that time there was no tel. So I said uh, nothing. I gave her this whatever. and her husband was associated with this and she i think was feeling ki phalto ka paisa he had donated 5 lakh rupees to some project so i'm sure there was some gutter motor inside the house jo 5 lakh rupees de diya they can easily afford it they like really really well off and uh, so she said uh, 
what will happen to you i know if you left your job how will you take i said i have my savings so 50% of my expenses can be met with my savings 50% my family will give me he said family con he is talking in hindi i said bhai hai pita ji hai he said nahi denge to kya karoge i look at said kyun nahi denge denge nahi denge ke to main mangunga denge so she didn't say anything she didn't look very happy but i gone for the first time kuch nahi bola chai chilai biscuit chilai main chala gaya jo bhi farsan mixture you know they gave you lot of food to eat and baad mein i found out that he was in a business and a uh, good business and and you know he had bought a lot of property in his younger brother's name jo bhi abhi cash ka jo paisa aata hai so you have to put it in some way <laughs> So except that house and some investments, all the other properties were in the brother's name. Bhai palat gaya. Ek din bola I won't give it back to you. <laughs> and the problem started after marriage. Typically, what happens in these marriages when the bahu, when the wife comes in, ek ek daughter in law, dosi daughter in law ko jamega nahi. Ya mother in law, daughter in law ko so somebody has to take side, hai na? So if the son is mother, then it will not be a problem. But if the son becomes visham or sam, he has a problem. He supports the wife, mother has a problem. He supports the mother, son has a problem. वो बेचारा सब विषम में ऐसा डोलता है. He doesn't know what to do. किस तरह बीच में? And then the the structure breaks. He broke. The other guy took away the property also. He said, "चल ये भी नहीं दूँगा because you fought with me." Uh, so sometimes you know trust breaks and then it is very hard to regain it. But the reason it breaks is is because we just had a glimpse of trust. We didn't understand what it is. We, we we didn't let it sink into us. So one of the questions we need to ask ourselves is: When do I feel afraid of somebody? When I have assurance of the other person, or when I'm not assured of their basic intention? We are all here. We are all assured. You don't need any aid, which is why we are able to stay together. Are we are able to stay here because we are assured of the people around us? यहाँ कुछ नहीं होगा आई नीड द लैप ऑफ यूर इन दून आई हैोशन So you can read till then, and I will also read it out. So that is me, other me and the other person. Okay, so we have A one, A two, A one, A two. Then I have B one. B two. Then I have C one, C two. A three, A four, B three, B four, C three, C four. First question: I desire my own well-being or my resolution. You know, I want to be happy or satisfied. True, false. True. Two. I am able to, in italic, always ensure my well-being. I am able to ensure my own happiness or resolution at all times. Not capable. So mostly here, I'll put one small cross because one person. Oh, so mostly false, and one person said yes. No problem. Let us look at the other human being. The other human being, the other person, my wife, 
sister, brother-in-law, mother-in-law, decide their own well-being or resolution. True? They too want the same thing as me. The other is able to always ensure their well-being. The other human being, my wife, mother-in-law, sister-in-law, brother, father, is always able to keep themselves happy or resolved. True or false? False. Eh? We don't give attention. So, if you see what is written here is basic desire, but there is no capability. I don't have the capability, they too don't have the capability, both of us desire the same thing. Basic desire is the same. Second question, I desire the other human being's well-being. Just for my family or for all humans? <laughs> they can go to hell. You know? Yeah, but would you desire that they be well? Your wish, your desire. You wish them all the best or you want them to go down the drain or you don't care? Three options. Mike, 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 Togoli. Mike, Kure. Our game, Mike, Kodi. Evidence is connected. <laughs> yeah, like. As a human being, I I am busy with my desires and my family or my close people who are close to me. So as you say, a ten person, a fifteen person, if you say in others in a bracket of others, okay, I I desire that fifteen people's well-being. But the people I don't know, how many billion people are there? I don't know. I don't know what they are going to do. I am not desiring about anything. So you can I can say partially it is true, but very small portion is true. Remaining 90% it is false. Like in this room, this 20 people, I am being with them for last 9 or 8 days. So I know these people to an extent, like as a, at least the surface level. So I decide for their building because I know them. I know you, like I met you, you teach me, I I decide for your well-being. You decide for our well-being, that's why you are teaching us. So, But I didn't know you before you came here. And if I des didn't desire for your well-being before you came and I wouldn't have come here. That's a point. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to spend a lot of money to come here and to be here. Kal aaya wo bill poona se wala 18,000 rupiah jama karo 31st ho gaya hai. We've left two people, no? To take care of them. Our parents. No, one is whether we, I am able to do something, whether you have to do something about it. One is you know these eight people, but you don't have to take any action to ensure their well-being. But what is your desire? I don't need to take any action. Okay, in that case, yes. That all the people <laughs> no, are busy. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> like, I am not, a, see, as if I am speaking in my capability, Correct. the limit of my capability. I am not capable to take care of my designers. If I go and take care of other designers, I will put them into another pit. Another problem. Hey, that's fine. So, not the doing, but what is your basic intention, your basic desire? No problem. That's you can intend anything. <laughs> it's not for the matter. See, you can intend intention like you can wish. Listen, give you are not putting any effort, any energy, nothing there. You are not even spending one minute over that. You can wish. I can I can wish. I wish happiness. There is no doubt in that. Because if I wish uh, unhappiness was it first start from me or here only. Like the burning starts here first. <laughs> so if you rephrase the question, how would you like other humans to be? Resolved and happy? Or you don't want them to be resolved and happy or you don't care? 
है ना यू वॉन्ट दम टू आजकल कुछ भी वायरल होता है नो बडी विल वॉच दिस किसी को फुर्सत ही नहीं है किसी को फुर्सत नहीं है थर्टी सेकेंड से आप पीपल वॉन्ट थिंग्स इन थर्टी सेकेंड देखो ने गिव दम टेन इन टू सिक्स सिक्सटी आवर वो तो बेहोश हो जाएगा साठ घंटे का एक पिक्चर बोला हाँ जी एक पिक्चर सिक्सटी आवर लॉन्गेस्ट मूवी एवर नो सिक्सटी आवर मूवी टेन डेज सिक्स आवर्स डे फिफ्टी फाइव आवर्स अ पीस हीरो ने and the fun of it is if you if you decide to stay back another day another 10 days we have enough masala for another 10 days <laughs> so so really when we think of other human beings one is when we think of all of humanity yeah and it bears us some some you know uh, important to really evaluate for one moment to just reflect and and really reflect and see how do i wish other human beings to be because i'm living it all of them and they affect me the news affects me and yeah, 50000 people killed 50 children killed 10 heads blown heads blown off it affects me and i have to decide what is my basic position with them not how many people i'm going to impact because these are the people i live with on a daily basis yeah Unless, unless you're, a, I don't know, like a motivational speaker or a politician, and then you can probably even then interact with what ten thousand people at a time, one lakh, two lakh. Nobody interacts with crores of people. You cannot impact crores. You can impact crores of lives using other things, technology, and all that, but not those people. So really, the question that is being asked, number one, is what is my basic intention or desire towards every human being? Not to desire your basic intention. What is your position? What would you wish for them? Like you know, my daughter goes to the school and they have something called as a tooth fairy. Ah, so you mean that when you get that, you see, you keep it under your under your pillow, and the tooth fairy will come and give you some gift. So last year she lost her tooth for the first time, and my wife told me at seven thirty in the night saying, "Oh, oh, her tooth has fallen down, and now the tooth fairy has to come and give something." So I had dinner and went at eight thirty, bought something, and then put it under her pillow after she slept. And she is now hearing it for the first time. And when she woke up in the morning, she thought the tooth fairy gave her something, and she was very happy. Okay. And I thought I let her be happy for a year. So today now it's about six months. The happiness can be taken away. There was no tooth fairy. Her father did it for her, you know, to let the child believe that the tooth fairy gave it. Okay. So, if we were to think that every person had a tooth fairy, all right, like children get a tooth fairy, what would you wish for that person? That they get their gift. That's all. Right now, that's all we want. Not how we can go and change them because then we cannot change them. There is too many, and they are all jangles. You can't change them. Okay. But what is my basic position with them? Number one. now for the people that i live with i desire my relatives family members well being true or false true every person that i have ever come across in this lifetime i want i am able to always ensure the other person's well being Which means people around me are happy with me. I am able to ensure the other person's well-being or their happiness or their resolution. We told we fall. He's a programmer. So the other individual, the other human being, desires my well-being. 
the other human being, all humans desire my well-being. I don't know. Will others, everybody else? Yes. So yes, and we'll put a small cross here. So we'll put the names of the people who have ulta, I mean, other answers: Suraj and Sanjeev Patil. So we'll come to that. Huh? You also don't. Uh, what's your name? Shruti, right? There is an activity called Shruti in the Jivan self, and it resides in contemplation. There are eight activities here: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One of them is called Shruti. Shruti. The definition for Shruti is Yatharth Jankari ka Bhasha Karan. The understanding of reality, so the the ability to give language to uh, yatharta, to the meaning, to reality, is called shruti. And when you are able to repeat it, it is called smriti. Then you don't forget it. Right now, do we have shruti or do we have smriti? We have smriti. We are able to repeat, but do we have the knowledge that we need to know? So the knowledge part is called shruti. Okay, it's one of them. One is called Shruti, one is called Medha, and so on. So each one of these, there are ten activities, and if you really want to have a nice circus, there are hundred and twenty-two. So right now we'll stick to ten. <laughs> this tasting and chayan, there are thirty-two kinds of aswadhan and thirty-two kinds of chayan. What are the thirty-two kinds of aswadhan? Sweeto, khara. All the tastes that you have, each one is an as. Huh? Six tastes. Uske baad, uske baad you'll get the behavioral experiences: mamta, samman, sneha, ha, ah. and then also the taste to do with purpose-based tasting and thirty-two ways of selecting. There are eight ways of doing tulan and eight ways of doing vishleshan. Sixteen and sixteen. There are eight chintan and eight pitran, and there are four here and four there, and then finally there's one here and one there. That put together is me. So in the eight chintan, one of them is shruti, the other one is called medha. Okay, one is called kanti, and so on. And here you have rup, you have smriti, you have kala. Kala is, you know, the ability to live, like kalakari, uh, you know, the art of living. We don't have them here. We don't have spirits, so we don't have our a, a counterpart here. Only shruti. So the Vedas are actually called shruti. It's not smriti. Uh, the shruti, when when they say the Vedas are smriti, basically means it's not man-made. It's, you know. Uh, They call it Akashwani, but basically it is Chitwani, not Akashwani. I mean, if if the Vedas are Shruti, which is why the other uh, like the Ramayana and Mahabharata are called Shruti. They are not Shruti. They are what you learn and repeat. Coming back to this, so Shruti. Hmm? I am able to always ensure the other's well-being. Oh, sorry, it was wrong. So it was question mark, okay? Wrong. And where we didn't have a full wrong, we'll put a question mark. So we'll come back to the question mark. Huh? You also fifty percent. We have one more person. B two. Question mark is there? Okay. In fact, that is a complete wrong. Yeah. Nobody is agreeing with it. In question mark, we have a tiebreaker. The other is able to always ensure my well-being. Completely wrong. He is making me miserable. The other human being, I am partially successful, but the other guy is a complete failure. No, you don't know. Now he is on the other side of the fence. Now everybody. So wrong and one question mark again. Question mark is true.
Surak means the sun. We have a friend called Ravi, Ravi Kant. Ravi also means the sun. Yeah. <laughs> I do not desire to commit mistakes intentionally. Can I intentionally make a mistake? Mistake hota nahi. Mistake mistake hota hai. Hai na? Then it's not a mistake. Then it is intentional. Where is it a mistake? You cannot commit a mistake on purpose. Hai na? Even in math, once you know what is right, how could you write the wrong answer? Hota hai nahi. We write the wrong answer because we don't know what is right. And we assume the wrong answer to be the right way to do it. The belief is, I am doing the wrong way. The child is doing the wrong mathematics. He feels that I have written the wrong way. The teacher says that you are wrong. And then he has to prove why he is wrong. Right? So, I do not desire to commit mistakes. See too, I do so unknowingly by mistake. Yeah. The other human being, other person does not desire to commit mistakes. Pehle, all other humans do not desire to commit mistakes. Every human being does not desire to commit mistakes. True? Every other human being, including my family members, does so unknowingly by mistake. Mistakes are unknowingly. Logically, but practically, we cannot say completely. <laughs> Logically, it is correct. But practically, we do ragging. So, ragging is a mistake. Do we know it's a mistake? Yeah, but we still do. So, what does that mean? We are knowingly doing a mistake, which means that what then do we really know it? If you are still doing it, we know that ragging is a mistake and you are still doing it. Does it mean that, does that mean, would that mean that we really know it? You took a chance, you want to do it. So does, does that mean that you really know it? Not that it's an offense, knowing that it is wrong. Because the college calls it an offense, but you feel it's okay to do it. You didn't feel it is good. When you went through ragging, you didn't feel it is good. So, would that mean that you know it or that you remember it? Is knowing the same as having information? Like we have information that you should not break the signal. Okay, but have you accepted it? No. I have the information. So, what we call as knowledge today, yeah, you are saying something. All of it. So, when we say knowing, like when we talk of glimpse and bhas, what are the, this is one level of knowing, this is one level of knowing, this is one level of knowing. When we look at knowing, Stage A, having information. Stage B, acceptance or clarity. Stage 3 is certain knowledge. Unchanging. Everybody knows it is wrong to do adultery and then they do adultery. What does it mean? I have the information, I have some vague acceptance with the information, but I still have other windows open. Chance mila to karuga. So I have conflicting desires. One spriti, one memory, one chitran says it is wrong, the other chitran says it is okay to break it as long as you don't get caught or under XYZ conditions. And I have a justification for it. Right? So, I have information, but I don't know. So, he or so, she does so unknowingly. 
I mean, typically some of the, you know, regular, let's say, irritating behaviors that you face at home. When does the behavior get irritating? Then not when it's done the first time, but when it is repetitive. When we moved back to Pune, we had to move back to Pune because whatever, next why the circumstances turned against our favor. And so we moved, okay, and we just landed in Pune. So when I reached Pune, I didn't know what to do. My father was retired. I was retired. He was getting a pension. I was not getting a pension. We were both sitting and eating his pension. Yeah? <laughs> okay. And I'm still eating his pension. Yeah. And the funny thing is, he's forgotten that I'm eating his pension. Sometimes he'll buy something and he'll wait for me to pay it. He's forgotten that his pension is coming to my account. <laughs> I gifted him a shoe on his birthday. He was very happy. But every month, 30,000 rupees moves from his account to my account. <laughs> so, uh, I, I didn't know what to do, right? Uh, my mother grew up in a kind of semi village setting like this. And, and you know, traditionally people didn't get, spend much time cleaning up. There was no time to clean up. There's so much of work to do, you can't sit. And there is a, uh, two ways to keep a kitchen. One is to keep it neatly, the other is to keep it haphazardly. My mother belongs to the second category, it's usually haphazard to my eyes. To her eyes, it seems fine. Because if she wants the hing, then the standard procedure, she will look in two, three places every day. Because she don't know where, she doesn't know where she kept it the previous day. Kabi idhar aya, kabi udhar aya. So I keep joking with her, her hands are like a helicopter, you know. It just the birds, the, the, you know, the, the blades swivel. Sometimes this dabba will go there. That dabba's lid will be on this dabba. This dabba will not have a lid. There will be a lid, but there will be no dabba. That's the way our kitchen will be. Now, after understanding that existence is coexistence, nature is in order, everything is order, kitchen has to be in order for me, right? My laptop is in order, everything. How can anything be disorderly? So, my gusa, I went into the fridge and I think I cleaned up our fridge nicely for the first time in eight years. I scrubbed the you know, that, that place where it sticks and everything was stick and span. And I put neat labels, milk, vegetables, old fruit, idli batter, ginger, chilies, you know, rope, bone, sabhava, dharma, everything, everything nicely. The next day I came, it was all upar I asked my mother, what have you studied? She said, BA economics. I said, Baba, padne ne aata ke, there idli batter likha, you kept that dahi. No, no, I did not do it. You didn't do it. Nobody has touched the fridge. So she's slowly alluding to my wife. But maybe your wife came and did it, right? I said she didn't come into the kitchen at all since yesterday. What do you mean to say? You think I did it? I said, okay, you didn't do it. This happened for like 15 days and Mera Jitna hard work, the full day ka. It was all looking like a royal mess. There was, anything was everywhere. So in the morning when I wake up at 4.30, I want to take out milk from the fridge. I don't know where it is. I don't know which dabba to take out to, because the milk has changed, you know, color, everything, rupun, sabadar, everything has changed. So now I have to take out the idli batter. I have to open up this, I'll find old milk. I have to open up that, I'll find some old, you know, dahi. There will be some old sabji and by then 15 minutes are gone. I want to have my coffee, go back to my studies. So I told my mother, why can't you follow this? And then finally I found that we were fighting. You know, and I mean, I was... Fighting at her. Then I, I determined, I made a sankalpa, I will not go near the fridge. I will not go into the kitchen. It is her kitchen. So when I go in the morning, I have already accepted I will not find the milk. I will spend because I cannot change her. See, this is called realization. <laughs> so this is called realization. So realization of what? We are accepting the image as it is. There is an image of my mother. There is an image of the kitchen, there is an image of the fridge, and it is all disorderly. Now, I have a desire that that image should be changed. But where is that image? It's outside me. So, there is only so much I can do. And if I see that I do not have control over that image, and again, seeing can be as information, it can be as acceptance or as, as the certainty of knowledge. But if I am able to really, really reflect, and I have to spend time doing that, right? I mean, I have to take out a walk and really reflect as to how to fix this problem. 
essentially, in you know, when it comes to relationships, really, sometimes it feels like we're so silly as human beings, and we are, because we get stuck into one pattern and we can't get out of it. And we will take that pattern to death, but we will not change it. I will die with my desire to fix the fridge, but I will not change my desire that the fridge should be fixed. Then I know that it cannot be fixed. So I don't know. So I can't see any better because I cannot see the other person. And when I'm able to do that, then I can make the first change. Okay, so let's look at our answers. Is it already time for tea? Five minutes? Tea ready at that. Okay, so let's break for tea and come back and, and take up the remainder of this exercise.